Hi, this is Scott from Compliers, the online compliance tool designed specifically for California businesses to help them comply with environmental regulations. This is the third video in a series about the California Environmental Reporting System, also known as SERS. In this video, we will show how to create an inventory item manually. If you have not created a SERS account and linked it to your business and facilities, go back to the instructions on Complierpedia. We have a useful video there. The first thing we have to do when we're in SERS is we have to sign in. I'm going to use the training sign in so that we don't mess up any of our clients' accounts. And let's take a look at my site. Now to access the inventory items, you have to start edit a submittal. Then you need to scroll down to the hazardous material inventory section. And in this particular case, you can see that we don't have any inventory because it says form needed. To start a new inventory, I'm going to click on new. And it's going to give us the option to add a material down here. Now you can use the SERS chemical library to create a SERS item, and I would recommend you do this. At least you've got a starting place. But if you're unable to find one, you have to start one from scratch. And so you'd select this, unable to find material, add new material. And here you're faced with a completely blank chemical inventory. And a lot of the materials on here would require a safety data sheet for the chemical item to answer the question. So we're gonna go through that one at a time and I'm gonna set it up as split screen so you can see what I'm talking about. Now, there's a lot of information that's important on the safety data sheet that's gonna go straight onto here. Um, we can, for example, use the product name. And often I just cut and paste right into it. What's the physical state of used oil? It's liquid. And the hazardous material type, pure mixture or waste. In this case, it's used oil, so we're going to call it a waste. And that's kind of tricky because if it was not a waste and it had multiple components in it, we call it a mixture. But since it's a waste, that's all you click. Is this a trade secret? No. Is it an extremely hazardous substance? No. By default, it's not radioactive. Now this section here are the fire code hazard classes. And I'll just drop that down. This is the list of fire code hazard classes according to the NFPA. If you don't find this information directly in here, then I would say I would skip it. If an inspector asks you to complete this portion, then you might have to do additional research. Dot hazard class. So it's got the entire list here to select from. And if we go to, I believe it's section 14, on your SDS, you will find the transportation information and the DOT shipping name is not regulated as a hazardous material. So we don't have to select any of these. Curies isn't applicable here because the material is not radioactive. The state waste code can be found right here. They link you right to the waste code uh, sheet and it's gonna be under organics and waste oil and mixed oil is waste code 221. Put that right there. Now, these are the federal hazard categories. This you're going to find directly on your SDS. You'll see that this is a skin corrosion irritant, an eye damage irritation, a sensitization for both respiratory and skin, germ cell mutagenicity. It's a carcinogenic. Reproductive toxin. And it has specific organ toxicity. So that's a lot of the technical information that you need to fill out for your hazardous material inventory item. This is more specific to your facility. The location the average daily amount, the maximum daily amount, the largest container of the material you have on site, 
how much you generate is waste, and then you need to select the units over here. Liquids are always given in gallons. And let's say we have 110 gallons on average. I usually use the average amount and then double it for the maximum. Or I take the maximum amount and have it to get the average daily amount. The largest container, let's say it's just 55 gallons. And the annual waste amount, let's say we do about 1,000 gallons a year. It's always on site. Is it confidential? These are optional. If you have a gridded map, you can put the location here. Inventory storage information is here. You can put it in above ground or below ground tank, steel drums, which is what we're doing here, and all the other options. Now storage pressure in this case is going to be ambient, and the storage temperature is going to be ambient. Mixture components don't have to be filled out. And that pretty much covers it. You can now save this and you'll have an inventory item, used oil. All right, so I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.